the please i just want to add something please go ahead sir all right so you see what thing happen now hmm? that pastor that pastor that has been apprehended is a daddy geo to many people uh -uh. he's a spiritual father to many people hey, show Maybe me your, before, show me your father now like father like sons no. So we have some that like man himself. is is a that geo, a spiritual father to many people. Maybe before now, someone will be speaking against the man. Then the church members, the blind church members, will be saying, "Don't talk to my spiritual father like that. Ah, Don't talk to my daddy geo like that." Now they can come and for see, their spiritual father as well. Come and see your spiritual father now. Come and see your daddy geo now. Many of I you for their spiritual fathers, listen, eh? Let me tell you something, Sister Chantel. In Nigeria, if you discover one case today, a particular case today, just have it in mind that there are millions of those cases going on somewhere. God, Do you understand what I'm saying? All of them, one after the other. If you discover, if you discover a particular case in Nigeria, have it at the back of your mind that you have a million of such cases happening in other places. This man has been caught. That is what we are talking about him now. There are many other pastors Thank you. that are into this nonsense. He's not doing it alone. For a man to be able to keep 50 children at once, 50 children at once, He's that not means doing this it alone. man is not doing it alone. There are other pastors that are doing this same shit with him. Okay? Now, <laughs> you know, maybe last week, maybe somebody spoke against this man. The church members will say, you are fighting against grace. You are fighting grace. You are fighting grace. What? Are you stupid? How are you Nobody sure you know who your now. spiritual father is? Is this one not disgrace now? How well do you think you know your spiritual father? How well do you think you know your daddy Gio? The time has come for, for people to look up to God, not up to their daddy Gio's. The time has come for people to look up to God, not up to their spiritual father. Honestly speaking, you do not know who your spiritual father is. This man has been arrested. He is a daddy Gio to many. People that believed in him, people that were ready to die for him. Maybe one of the people that were dying for this man, maybe one of their children was even kidnapped by the same man they are dying for. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is possible that some of the people that say, hey, this is my spiritual father. Maybe your spiritual father has even kidnapped one of your children. So when are we going to learn? When are we going to unlearn some of the nonsense we have learned in the past? This is no longer Christianity. These people have turned Christianity into something else. When you are going to church, you are scared. Because if you are going to church, you are not even sure if you are returning with your child. Hmm. Greetings, people. It's Mr. Paul the Trigger yet again on another episode of the Enlightenment series. So following the previous video that I uploaded, following the recent video that is going viral of 50 kids that were found underground in the basement of a church in Nigeria, most of you have not yet understood what really happened. Do you know when it's just news that comes and pass, news that comes and pass, people tend to neglect or to ignore the depth or the intensity of the things or of the incident that took place. These are 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Don't run out of numbers. Don't run out of fingers. 50, 5, 0 kids that were kidnapped. And they were kept in the basement of a church, which is probably being led by a philanthropic father who has a philanthropic status in the community, who has a humanitarian status in the community, who the society look up to and say is doing so much for the people. If this was just a conspiracy theory, or, the, or if these were just allegations that this pastor is doing this, 
the society would rise up and say, don't touch the anointed. This man is a good man. This man gives people scholarships. This man does charity. This man gives people handouts in church. The same way people are reacting and responding to the case of baby testimony. The first thing that the defenders of Omoto does, or the first thing that they do, whenever we raise this case of baby testimony is, but how can he take someone's child when he's actually helping so many people in the community, in the society? Prophet Jeremiah Omoto can never do that, can never be responsible. He's giving people 5 million naira, 10 million naira in his church. He's a good man. He's a philanthropist. He's a humanitarian. He has a good heart. That's the first thing that people will say. That's the first, those are the things that people are saying. They are defending him on the basis of his humanitarian, stage-managed, philanthropic activities and gestures. When I come here and then I say, Chibuzo Chinere is promiscuous. He takes advantage. He manipulates young girls. He sleeps with young girls, makes them pregnant. He takes different kids. If you go to Chibuzo's ministry right now, if you are a, a member of Chibuzo, Chibuzo Chinere, this charlatan that recently helped Deborah, and gave the family of Deborah an estate or a, a flat as a way to console them for the loss that they made, that they incurred after the demise of Sister Deborah. If you go to that man's house today, you'll find kids all over. Kids all over. I will dig deeper into this man. Not dig deeper. I've already dug every, to the deepest level that I had to. But I don't want to keep bringing you things that will confuse our mission to get baby testimonies justice. But this man is doing the same thing as the rest of them. Most of them that show you as if they love kids. If you look at Omoto's characteristics and attributes, he's always grooming these young boys. He's always grooming these young boys to become prophets. Right now, as he walks, as he's administering his shrine, there's this young man, a young man who's supposed to be in school, a young boy that is calling a prophet, that is grooming in this falsehood. That's what they're all doing. So now when there is something that is evident like this, when the police of Nigeria actually decide to take it upon themselves to do their jobs and actually corner these, uh, these clergymen, these false prophets, we can always come to the result in finding the secret behind all their administrations. The reason why they've not yet exerted so much pressure on Omoto for fame to bring out the truth about what happened to baby testimony, I still don't know. But we are getting there. This is just God making openings for us. This is just God bringing the truth to the people. I told you, this case of baby testimony, this spirit of baby testimony, don't tamper with it. Don't take it for granted. Don't ever try to do any form of damage control when it comes to this case. All this is happening because of testimony, of baby testimony. That's what I believe. That's what I think. Because the spirit, and we, we might not find baby testimony in it anytime soon until God has uncovered all that needs to be uncovered concerning the abduction of kids. That's why I'm always urging you people to be patient and to leave this in, God, in God's hands. The only thing we have to do is to, to do what we can do now. There's no hurry in Africa. One thing I can guarantee you still up to date is we will find baby testimony against all odds, no matter the weather. We will find baby testimony. How, when? Let's leave it up to God. All we have to do is to do what we can do now with what we have. Expose what we have to expose on a daily basis until we get to the roots of these abduction syndicates. Because in the process, if we get baby testimony tomorrow, we might never know or get the wind of other kids being abducted in different sections, in different shrines in Nigeria. The church has become now the hub of abductions. The most sacred place that we thought it should be is now, is now becoming a, a, a hub. It's now you know, facilitating this entire abduction of kids and is being allowed by the government of Nigeria. Which brings the question, why are these churches not being closed? Why are they not being monitored? This is supposed to be the safest place ever. But that's the blind spot because we, we assume them to be safe. We expect them to be safe. 
that has made them become so dangerous to the community. If they can abduct kids, no one will search them. No one will ever suspect to think to search in a church. Who would? Now for this DGO, for this pastor to be caught now, he did not start doing this today. This was not his first attempt. How many more kids have been abducted? These are 50 that we found underground in the basement. This was just had been a coincidence. 50 at one go. 50 at one go. We are crying about one baby testimony. That managed to get the lack of being spoken about the way we are speaking about him. But how many more kids have gone missing at Mesa City? We only know of baby testimony. In the case of this pastor, we only know of 50 kids that have been found. How many more has he done? Has he abducted? And where has he taken them? Where has he taken them? What is he doing with these kids? What project is it? This syndicate? Who are the kingpins? Who are the driving forces behind this whole operation? We will find baby testimony. The spirit of baby testimony will fight for other kids that are going through what baby testimony is currently going through right now or what baby testimony went through. This is part one of two. I want to I wanna, I wanna make you listen to the conversation that I extracted from, um, what's the name of this platform? It's Chantel KV TV programs. I would advise you to go and subscribe to the platform. Yeah, it's one of the platforms uh, which is talking about baby testimony as well, which is also advocating for baby testimonies justice. So if you have your own two cents, if you have your own contributions, anything you want to share, interact with people that are also on the same course, I would advise you to go and subscribe to their channel. It's on Facebook. It's, like, it's more like the option B to Dadamasis. I don't know if I'm putting it correctly, but Dadamasis was one of the platforms that we thought was going to also push uh, this move and also you know, help by providing a platform where people can interact. But this is a time that we have to create as many platforms as possible. We can't be dependent on one platform. The moment a platform seems or tries to show some certain aspects or attributes of, uh, I can't say compromise, but when the truth is being suppressed and when the truth is not being presented the way it should be presented, when we say, okay, remain neutral, and you can't maintain that neutrality, whenever the truth against the one you favor is, is being spoken, you tend to suppress it because you're in authority of the platform. I think we just have to make a plan B. So this page, if you can go subscribe, you know, keep in touch with the programs and stuff, you get to say your mind. I wish if I can also offer the same platform whereby I can engage with people, but I might end up going for hours and, you know, my time might not allow me to be hosting live programs and such, but I'll be going to extract all the conversations that I find possible or that are meaningful and, con and uh, of relevance to this discussion that we are having of baby's testimony. So go check out their page. I, I'll probably put it on the screen so that you can go and participate as well. Add your two cents. Add what you have to say. Well, so many people call me, Prof, go live. We also want to call in. We also want to join and share what we thought our own contributions. So this is another choice. This is another option where you can go and uh, submit your concerns and make your contributions. And I'll always go and extract some of the pieces, some of the information that I get there and some of the discussions and bring them again on this platform. Because the idea is to make sure that this conversation does not die. This conversation has to go on as long as it can possibly go until we get justice for baby testimony. There is no stopping reggae. We have to do whatever that we can to make sure that we get justice for this one precious, one special kid called baby testimony. So that's the page name. Do go and subscribe because they have the heart to find the missing child. So I'll play one of the conversations that I extracted and uh, I want you to pay attention to the details. This is part one of two. And on the next, on the part two of two, I want us to connect dots. The dots I want us to connect are the dots between what God's love said. I'm sure most of you still remember God's love speech. The first time he contacted me, what he said about kids being abducted, about a place where kids are being kept, about the involvement of politicians and other DDGOs in this syndicate of abducting kids. And the things that he said about what they use these kids for. Most of you might have thought God love is making this up. He wasn't. God love knew what he was talking about. Remember, God love was working on assignment. 
He was being told what to say, what to do, and how to sell. What God love was saying was the truth. He could have never convinced us if he was lying. What God love said was the truth. So in part two, it was a conversation again from Chantel that I'm going to post on part two, on part of, of, of these two episodes. It's very critical that you pay attention to it because there's a lot that we want to connect. Let's not throw away the confession of God love. Never let we do that. God love gave, gave us the confession. That was the true confession. Never discard it. They wanted to use him for other things to trap us or to get us implicated in this whole syndicate of blackmailing or motor or of trying to go and kidnap uh, the Cameroonian child and stuff like that, which, were, which did not uh, bring any fruits to their table. But I'm going to play the conversation, the confession of God love, and we connect it with this new development of kids that have just been recovered. But for now, let's listen to this conversation, which is uh, uh, in line with the situation and with the abduction of the 50 kids that were recently found, as we also put at the center of the entire conversation, how and where could a baby testimony be? What could they be doing with baby testimony? So listen to it. The, the truth is, Nigeria has become uh, a country that no man has the right adjective to qualify. Honestly speaking, what is going on right now is something that beats my imagination. Our pastors are now worse than, than bandits themselves. A church is supposed to be a place of refuge. A church is supposed to be a place where the heart broken would go to and that person will be comforted. Right now, what we are experiencing is the direct opposite of what a church should be. Just imagine a pastor, somebody that should be leading people to Christ. Yeah. Kidnapping up to 50 children at once. Tell me, is that man a pastor or a demon? Honestly speaking, when I think about what our churches are turning into, it Thank breaks you. my heart. It breaks my heart. This is to tell you that this so-called pastor has wasted many innocent lives in the past. For the security uh, agency to be able to uh, recover 50 children at Good once. Way. At once. That is to tell you that this man has kidnapped over 50,000 children in his lifetime. Yes. I think the time has come for the federal government to put in place machineries to make sure that church activities are monitored. It, it is not out of place if church activities are monitored. Recently in the United Kingdom, a church was closed down because the pastor misappropriated the funds of the church. That one was even fraud. Now, in Nigeria, we are having churches where pastors have become ritualists, where pastors have become kidnappers. Now, what do you expect if the government is not doing anything? Now, you asked the question earlier, if baby testimony, uh, maybe the probability of him suffering the same fate yes. was there. Now, the reality is that I won't shy away from it. It is possible. It is possible. Because those 50 children that were kidnapped, they came from homes. They didn't jump from the skies. Right. Yes. The way, the way Ruth, her, whoever that loves justice, is talking about testimony, is talking about the whereabouts of testimony, is still the same way the mothers and the fathers and the relatives of those children were probably no. looking for them before now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Was probably the same way they were looking for those children. For those children. 
So it is it is heartbreaking, it is disheartening that pastors have, uh, have descended to this level. How could pastors stoop so low to the extent of kidnapping children and you even have the guts to keep them in the basement of the church? How come you still have the guts to keep these children in the basement yeah, of the church? Of the church. Sorry, oh, sorry. In the basement. Good evening, ma. So it is, it, is, it is surprising. So church activities should be regulated. Honestly speaking, it should be regulated because what we are seeing now is no longer what Christ wants us to do. We are doing the opposite. Anybody that wants to buy a child for ritual now goes to the church to buy. Is that what it's supposed to be? Yeah. When you are looking for a baby for, for, for money rituals, you no longer hire bad boys to kidnap those children. You now go to the church to buy them. Is that what church should, should be about? When a mother goes to church with a child, the mother no longer returns home with the same child. Please, uh, somebody else to talk. I'm just really angry, honestly. Wow. Yes, you are right, uh, Brad Titles. Good evening. Thank you for joining. You're right. And uh, Brad Tony Tony, God bless Prophet. He has enlightened so many people, including me, because I have never knew a time will come when mothers will go to church with their children oh, and well, without children. Oh my God. It is <laughs> it is all God all the way. And Brad Titus said uh, government should close some churches. Not some. All churches. All. All. They need to start from square one again. Not some. All churches, they need to be investigated. They need to be investigated. Is it wrong for you to be doing your house fellowship at home? Like the no, way they used to the days the old churches they need to be investigated if i if i were to be the government eh, if i see this thing i just saw now all churches should be rounded up now and be checking under their basements they, 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 they use god they cover body they, they use bible they cover face only god know how how many years all these parents do they look for their children Church is not be church again. Church not be church again. You go go church today, tomorrow you will, you go here and I saw the pastor do this. Now the pastor do that and I saw the pastor do this. At the end of the day, you, you, you as a church member, you know the truth. You are covering for your pastor. You are covering for your pastor. You go do and reach your eye. You go do and reach your side before your eye go open. You go do and reach your side. So this is just the basic truth. The church has been turned into something else that it was never intended to be. And sons and daughters of the DGOs, I can still see you in the comment section. You're still fighting hard. Don't touch the anointing. Don't fight grace. There's no grace there where you think there's grace. If there was grace in these DGOs of yours, I wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't be talking the way that I'm talking. God would have fought for them. But God is on my side, people. It might take you forever to believe it or to understand it. God is on my side. And there is nothing that these people can ever do that can overcome or outweigh God's plan. They are probably in God's plan as well. And what we are doing, we are actually making the God's plan. Or what they did was actually bits and pieces of bringing this plan of God of exposing all this falsehood and bringing the truth to the people, to the believers of Christ. There was a Judas Iscariot amongst the disciples. He had a role that he had to play for the mission of Christ to be fulfilled. These false prophets, they had a role to play in this our road to the kingdom of heaven. They played their role. Now it's time for us to demystify all the falsehood, all the foundation of false doctrines and all these things that they have been doing, thinking that they'll never come to light. But the challenge that we might currently face or that we are currently facing are the stubborn followers of these people. What they do not realize is this fight is for them. We are fighting for them. We are not against them. 
We are trying to protect them. We are trying to get them out of this trap, out of these shrines. But they see us as the enemies. They are even fighting back day and night. Saying you are fighting, you are touching the anointed. But the anointed are kidnapping kids, are kidnapping children. These kids have parents. What were the parents thinking? What were they thinking to say, where are our children? Obviously, the church can never be the first place that they can suspect. They can never think the daddy G.O. took the children, took the kids. Never. So what do you have to say now? The daddy G.O. has been found in possession of 50 children. And it's happening in church. On Sundays, speaking in tongues. On Sundays, calling you out and prophesying. And telling you that God saved. In that time, there are kids in the basement. African people, my African brothers and sisters, this is the time. This is the time for us to stand together, sing with one voice. Let's get rid of these shrines. They are destroying our communities. They are destroying our societies. They are tarnishing the image of Christ. They are tarnishing the church of God. They are making all the efforts that Christ made to the cross, to the cross in vain. They are killing and destroying the faith of believers. Who would still go to church now? Tell me a single normal parent or a mother that thinks, that is sensible, that can still go to a Nigerian church with their children. Tell me one mother that can do that. And if you're a mother and you're still going to church with your kids, I can't, I can't, I can't give you, I can't tell you what I think. What, I can't describe you the way that I should describe you. But you don't care about your kids. If you can still take that risk. Do you know going to, with your children to the club is now far much better? Say, and me even safer. If anything, nothing can ever happen there. Those drunkards, they'll fight and protect your children there. If a child goes missing, if you go with them to a club, they will do whatever that they can to make sure that you get that child back. That's what I think. But if you can go to a church, a child can go missing. The members of the church will actually start castigating you to say you are reckless. Hey, what, what? Don't accuse our father. Get out. Leave our premises. You're trying to tarnish the image of our church. It never happened. The child never went missing. They can do all forms of damage control to make it look like you're lying but forgetting that there's a child in question. So wait for part two of two of this particular discussion involving the kidnapping of children and the confession that God love gave when we started talking to him. I want there, there are some dots I want us to connect there. So till I meet you again on the next episode of the Enlightenment series, this is Mr. Paul the Trigger. I'm out.